with drying your clothes. I think I'm going to stop here because I hate to have you listen all the way to the... Well, Bob, today is January 12th. It's my younger brother's birthday, Larry's birthday. And, uh... I just listened to both sides of the first tape I sent you. And I kind of left you up in the air, I, I know. But, uh, you know, at both ends of it. But things are better that way, I don't know. Uh, well, I, the, I didn't listen, I listened to the whole, both sides completely to the end. Let me say in the first side that I was sick Christmas Eve and I did feel kind of faint and I sat down. It was because of those no-dose pills mixed with all the alcohol I had that day. But uh, that's that. Uh, as I said, today is January 12th, and uh, I was out this afternoon. I went out to see Franny in Framingham. It's about 20 miles away. And I usually go once a week or so. <coughs> and we went out to dinner as usual, and we had a few drinks. Franny had four black Russians. They didn't have any rusty nails. They didn't have the ingredients, so he had four of those, and he had to go to work at three. And I had a whiskey sour and two vodka Collinses, and I am on my second uh, Secum 7 and ginger ale. I call them highballs. So, I don't know how this tape is going to sound to begin. There was so much I wanted to say while I was listening to both sides of those tapes. But, uh, <laughs> the second side seemed very interesting to me. You know, it was, uh, I don't mean to, you know, to me, you know, I was listening to myself speaking, but, you know, I was kind of wishing someone else would understand me as I spoke. And, uh, well, both sides for that fact. But, uh, I am feeling quite happy right now. Not, you know, completely pizzazz yet. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for your tape. Your third tape, it was there after Christmas, and I will send them all back. The next time we correspond, I will, if I remember, you know, to, I will send those tapes back to you with the leaders on them and everything. Uh, yes, first things first, I can't remember everything, but like you told me, your mother was uh, very sad over the holidays and uh, you felt kind of bad about it. Well, don't because uh, my mother's the same way. Uh, she feels uh, down moody sometimes, and, and I try to talk to her, and I couldn't. She started crying and everything, and uh, she's 55, so I think she's past her period in life where they go through the change. I think that, uh, well, as my mother says, you're not a girl or a woman you can't understand. And, which is true, and this is what I think your mother's probably going through. She is lonely, uh, even though she has your brother and you, maybe not at home, but uh, she needs someone to understand her more. A man can only go so far, right? A woman can't understand a man completely, and a man can't understand a woman completely. And... Uh, I think your mother's just having the blues, you know? And this will pass maybe within a few weeks, a few months, a year, a couple of years. It depends on the individual. I know this, you know, from my own mother. So I wouldn't worry about it, you know? Just always try to be cheerful whenever you talk to her or write to her. And I think this would uh, help out a lot. So that's that. Then I was very interested in hearing all the blizzards and the snow you had there. We've been very fortunate in Massachusetts not having very much snow. We've had a few ice storms and rain and then ice again, but uh, not much snow at all this year. We've been very, very lucky. Uh, it surprised me when you said that they emptied all the snow in Nebraska into the Mississippi River. Well, I'll be waiting the spring to hear and the reading the papers and on TV to see that uh, they'll probably be all having floods out there if there was that much snow. And uh, who are you going to say whose fault it is? Well, 
<laughs> there it is right there. They poured it all into the Mississippi. Now I don't see how many people suffer from it. Uh, Franny and I last week, as you notice, I'm talking fast because I want to talk fast and get everything I important. Well, not important. Everything is important, I say, I feel, but everything I can get my thoughts about that I want to tell you before this alcohol starts to reach into me real deep. Uh, Franny and I saw this past week, uh, Your Own Thing, not Your Thing, that's the name of the, the name of the play is Your Own Thing, Your Own Bag, uh, well, you wouldn't understand, I don't think, yeah, whatever you like in life, that's yours, you know, that's your thing, that's your bag, okay, and it was a very good play, it, uh, was an awful lot like Haya, I, there was no nude scenes in it, but, uh, the same points were, uh, stressed, and, uh, it was, you know, on the whole, it wasn't basically the same. I mean, if you've seen your own thing, it doesn't mean that you've seen Haya, the play Haya. But uh, it was a good, very good play. It was rather short, and that's the way I like them. It was about maybe two hours and 15 minutes long, and uh, usually the most of them last three hours, and you're roasting in these theaters, and uh, makes it all the worse. But this was very, very good. I enjoyed it, and... Uh, I don't know. It's probably playing in New York now. It's probably off Broadway. It isn't on Broadway, but it was good. And uh, as I told you, we've seen promises, promises. And uh, from what all the critics say now, it's one of the best plays of the year, if not the bl the best play of the year. I enjoyed it. I, as I said before, I enjoyed here much more. But uh, promises, promises was very good. We also seen a play uh, starring Andrew, Angela Lansbury, Dear World, and uh, I thought that was uh, better than Promises, Promises, perhaps because in Promises, Promises, we had maybe 10th row seats, and when we seen Dear World, we had uh, second or third row, row seats, and I think the closer you are to the stage, you enjoy it more. But. Uh, as all of them we did enjoy. As I said before, I don't see Franny that often. This week, I seen him last Tuesday when we went out to see uh, a movie. I mean, the play, Your Own Thing. And then I see him today. This is usually unusual for me to see, uh, you know, see him that often. But, okay. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble uh, after Christmas. My car broke down again, and... I ended up paying $55 for it, taking a couple of days off, you know, calling I was sick and I wasn't, you know, my car was sick and I was sick over my car. If you want to say I was sick, I was sick. But, uh, you know, I was worried about it. I mean, my car is in perfect running condition right now. I hesitate to go too far, you know, with it. I need a new one. I can't afford it, mainly is because, uh, my insurance is about 300 bucks a year, and then I'm taking out a loan of 500 bucks, not on my own, it's paying my mother's bills, so each month that's uh, close to 100 bucks a month, and you can imagine, you know, how much out of that my paycheck is, you know, okay, I make 100 and something a week, but by the time the government gets through ever taking out everything and everything else, you know, you bring home $72 or something like that, and that's not very much, so I have to stretch stretch things a lot. <coughs> I hope to send something with these tapes to you, uh, because I know your birthday is February 2nd, and uh, I didn't send you a birthday present mainly, I mean a Christmas present mainly because, you know, at first I thought you were coming down here, and I said, well, I'll take them out in the town and everything. But now I can't afford a p Christmas present and a birthday present, but I hope the first tape makes up for it, because I thought it was kind of interesting. And I hope this tape is, too, as I go on. Uh, I don't know. I have a whole slew of tapes in here. I'm just going to, you know, tape as much as I can, and that's it. I don't expect you to send all the tapes back. You know, whatever you feel, that's it. Uh, don't feel obliged or anything. I know time is pressing in both places, and... Uh, kind of hard, you know, sit down and tape all the time, and, well, for me, uh, like at work, I've been pretty busy, I've been put in charge of a project, 
making these electrical cables for uh, a camera, and that's all I can go into it. I think it would get too involved if I went into it, but it takes about three weeks to build one at the least. And there's four or five people working on them, and I'm ahead of it. And uh, we have a lot of mistakes made during them, and at the end we got to correct them and all this shit. So then, you know, after work sometimes, a few of us go out down to Howard Johnson's, which is only about a quarter of a mile up the road, and we stop in for a few beers, and uh, it's getting to be quite a habit with me, and I have to stop because I've been drinking too much. Uh, well, we go bowling on Thursday nights, and uh, we usually drink a few beers then. Sometimes we drink more than a few, and then we should see me bowl, and she last week I did the worst I ever did. This is 10 pin and it's the little ball, so I don't know if the piano pin I think you call it. It's a little, you know, smaller ball compared to the big balls with the, which you put your fingers in. And I got a 56 last week. Oh, I could have cried. And uh, then I, well, I got a couple of 70s. You know, you bowl three strings each week on a team. My team is called the Mission Impossibles. I think they should change it to the gutter dusters because it's all... A few of us, you know, we throw the balls in the gutter more than straight down the lane, knocking all the pins over. But we usually have a pretty good time. <coughs> Excuse me? <laughs> this sounds funny, I know. But I'm trying to say everything as fast as I can, you know, everything that's on my mind. Uh, now everything has slipped because I start thinking, let me have a drink here, Bobby. <laughs> here we go. I'm still on that half a gallon of secrums there. I haven't, well, enough to last me the rest of the week anyways. My goodness. So I was telling you about going down to Howard Johnson's drinking. We call it uh, Building 18 because the company I work for owns about maybe 12, 14 buildings. But the numbers go up to 16. I, no, the building, the building numbers go up to 17. You know, you say, oh, I'm got, I have to go with building 17, etc. So we call that building 18. And for the last couple of Fridays, my God, a couple of guys go down there and we drink. And uh, usually just one of the guys stays with me and drink. He's a nice guy. His name is Bob Boom. Kind of, uh, I don't know, he's a big guy. He's kind of corny in some ways, but, you know, we enjoy drinking together. And I think the first f couple of Fridays ago, we got out from 4 o'clock until 9.30 I was down there. And then last week we were down there from 4 o'clock until uh, 7, 7.30. So I gotta stop that. Besides, the drinks are expensive down there. 55 cents for a beer and a dollar for any mixed drink, dollar and up. So, I can't afford it. I just have to tell myself I can't. Um, that's mostly what's new with me. And, uh, I'm very worried lately, especially about financial problems. My car, I don't know how long it's going to hold out. generator was broken it and they had to free fix the brushes in it and I had it rebuilt last June and I had to pay for a new one you know I a rebuilt one it cost me 33 something and then this one again and we had a traumatic experience around here I've been losing uh, antifreeze you know in the radiator every week so I've been putting buying and buying antifreeze every week. It's cost about five bucks, you know, for a couple of gallons. If it was a summer, you know, I could put water in it. Well, I changed all the hoses and everything. And uh, in the in the you know in the car that goes the radio, there's about four or five different hoses. <laughs> and I still didn't find the leak. So a few Saturdays ago, a couple of Saturdays ago, maybe a week ago, from to this date. I don't know when you're going to get this tape, or these tapes, but I finally, you know, I couldn't find the leak, so fi I thought, first I thought it was in the radiator, and then I says, it couldn't be, you know, because it wasn't leaking out that fast, and I couldn't see it dripping from the radiator, it looked like it was coming from the motor, and I says, geez, I hope my block doesn't have a, a leak in it, 
And I finally looked around one day. It was free. It's been, you know, cold out, no snow, thank God. And I finally found the hose, and I changed it, you know, right before I was supposed to pick up my mother from work. It was a sad day. And uh, I just cut a piece off of it because part of it was rotten. I thought I could get away with it, and I didn't cut it straight. And by the time I got up to pick up my mother, the car was smoking and steam was coming all on, out from all underneath the hood. And I tell you, I've been worried so damn sick. I'm just sick of it. <laughs> but uh, so I said, well, Ma, she, I think we should call Jackie. And she didn't want to call my older brother because he's married and doesn't want to bother him. So she said, I'll take a taxi home. And I said, well, we'll see if we can make it. And she says, well, let's go and have a cup of coffee and a donut, and then it should be OK. You know, that's your mother, you know. People don't know anything about machinery, you know. Just have a cup of coffee and donut, and everything will be all right, sure. I only wish. <coughs> so I ran from one store to the other before they closed while I was waiting for her to pick up some radiator hose and antifreeze again. And uh, so finally I poured it all in. She came to the car and it was cold out, and she was shivering. And uh, I poured it in, and the whole thing leaked off. This was in this big, you know, shopping center parking lot. The whole antifreeze just poured right out, and I thought I had a, a leak in my block for sure. It just looked like it, you know. I looked under the car, and everything was pouring out, but I couldn't see from where, so I thought it was the block. So I says, well, my, I don't think we're... Well, you know, I've had it. My car doesn't have it. I can't afford to get another car, and I don't know how I'm going to get to work. And this sounds just like words to you, but cripe, we worried like hell. So I said, well, let's try it. Well, we'll start it up and see if we can make it home. And we took the side roads, and it took us three hours to get home. I had to stop every few miles because the car would overheat and would steam up and everything, and I didn't want to ruin the block, split it by overheating it. So it took us three hours. My mother didn't talk to me for the first half hour. She was nervous, I was nervous, and all this shit. And we start talking, you know, and everything, and trying to comfort each other. But finally we made it home. My mother had the chills for about two days, and I'm not exaggerating. And I took my car down to this place to get fixed. It's a, a few cities away. <coughs> they fix electrical equipment because the generator light was showing red and it doesn't supposed to and I thought maybe the generator was gone I fixed the hose but now the generator went and then I found out the pump went and the ignition went so it's cost me 55 lousy bucks you know this is almost my whole week's pay and I had to borrow from my mother and she didn't have it but she borrowed it some from a bank that she had to pay my aunt her aunt's bills, you know, it's a kind of a will. There isn't that much money. It's about maybe $900, and we took out close to 500 of it to pay up my mother's other bills and all this shit. You don't know what worrying I'm going through. So I paid that. You know, I didn't know where I was going to get the money. I hinted to my older brother, but he couldn't afford it because his wife's expecting and as I said, today is January 12th, and tomorrow, January 13th, I have to go with my brother, my older brother, over to Boston, where his wife's going to have her baby, we hoped, as she had the last one, to uh, donate blood, a pint of my blood, because uh, if she needs blood, you know, for any emergency or anything, it'll cost her about 30 or $40. But as long as somebody donates a pint, she won't have to pay for any of the blood. And... Uh, I noticed uh, uh, last week in the uh, news on the on the news on TV that my type O R H negative, they only had three pints of my blood in ho on all of Massachusetts, and I want to donate it, but uh, I didn't have a car first of all, and then I did have that Hong Kong flu. I don't. I hope they'll let me give tomorrow. They better. So, as you can see, I've been very, very worried. I don't, I don't know if you ever realized how much I worry. I worry too much, and it must take about a year off my life every time I start worrying real badly. So, <coughs> that's most of the news. 
they say I'm starting to drink again. I've had a few drinks in me, but I stopped for a while. Well, I drank a little while I was listening to the uh, first tape on both sides. I don't, I don't know which side I began on, but I played the, the most intelligent side first because I didn't sound slightly inebriated as I did on the other side. I think you'll enjoy them. I hope you did as much as I did listen to them. I thought they were pretty good. <laughs> Except I left you up on air. But I think you know the points I'm getting across. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, I'll try to put something in here, you know, for your birthday. And if not, I mean, I will, I'll, no matter how small it is. I'll send you the book also of your own thing. The, what, I don't know what you call it, the program. Not the program. Well, the program, I don't know what you call it. The book, anyways. It's not a book, it's a pamphlet sort of thing. And let me start right now. So sit down wherever you are, against the radiator or what I, whatever. It was funny, you know, when you sent me your first tape, you said you were leaning against your radiator tape and everything. And uh, when I listened to it, I hardly ever sit against the radiator in the living room. And no one was home at the time. And it was kind of cool in the room, so I sat against the cool. It was cold. It's either cold or hot in this place. So I started to listen to your tape, and I was leaning against the radio. It was so nice and warm. Ugh. So I thought that was kind of a coincidence. You know, you mentioned it, and usually I never sit against the radio. Right now I'm in my room again. By the way, if you can remember on the first tape, I told you about my room and everything, and I was supposed to sleep in the bed. I went back into the living room and watched a movie with my mother, and that's why I didn't finish, you know, taping a couple of tapes to you. <coughs> and... Uh, I fell asleep during, you know, the first half of it or something like that. And I haven't slept in this room, I don't know and when. It's been at least a month and a half anyways. And the clothes are still strewn all over the way, place. I washed everything today. Not everything. Washed all my whites. But I don't have my mother do any of the washing. She, she can't anyways. I mean, she could, but, you know, why make her more tired than she is? the microphone between my legs right now because my knees because I am lighting up a cigarette now let me see here I go again <laughs> okie doke so I've had my time this past few weeks and I hope the rest of the year isn't like that We have a pool at work, and I've won it a couple of times. I only joined it about a month and a half ago, and it's $30. You know, you put a dollar in each week, it's about 30 people, 35, but you give $5 to the guy who, who runs it. So I've won $30, you know, a couple of times. It's helped, to help, help. it's helped me a heck of a lot. But as again, I say, I'm in, still in the financial stress because I... I need a new car. <coughs> Excuse me. But I can't afford one. You know, I'll have to buy another used car sometime. But, uh... My insurance hasn't come in this year for my car yet. The bill is usually $300, and I have to put $90 down and pay 45 a month or something like that. Plus, you know, the other bill I told you about from the bank, that loan, I have to pay... 45 of that each month, so it doesn't leave very much for me. Plus, given to my mother every week, so. I'm a very poor boy. What the hell? That's life, huh? Uh, let me see. I'm watching the needle go up on this. It doesn't go very high. I'm going to turn the. the uh, Wait a minute, if I put the re the microphone real close to my mouth, the needle goes way up. I'm not going to turn it up higher. Oh. It's just good talking to you on the tape, you know, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I had a pretty good Christmas. Franny gave me a lot of gifts. He gave me a, a quad of uh, VO. 
that's liquor, it was in a little golf bag with two shot cups and it's kind of a nice thing, it was kind of expensive, I know that. Then he gave me this uh, valet thing, I guess you call it, it's a kind of a rack that you put, hang your coat on and you can put your shoes at the bottom and put your tie on it and your pants and uh, I thought that was nice of him. And let me see, what else? Oh, my mother gave me a couple of shirts, which I picked out from the store where she works. And what did Larry give me? He gave me some uh, English leather, which I don't use that much. But I will use it since I have it. I use the soap. And uh, one of my aunts and uncles gave me some... My favorite cologne, it's called um, Royal Lime, and it's, it used to only be able to be bought in Bermuda. They went to Bermuda last year, and they brought me back a bottle, and then their neighbor went to Bermuda this year, and uh, they would tell me about it, and I says, oh, what? I'll give you some money to buy me a couple of bottles of that, you know? And they says, no, 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 you know? Well, first I says, okay, and then I forgot about it, you know, and I didn't want to infringe on them, and then I found out that they gave gave her some money to buy it and I got two bottles of it it's real nice stuff so I had a pretty good Christmas then my older brother and his wife they gave me a white turtleneck it's a not a shirt it's like a sweater I have it on right now so that's how I made out for Christmas that's all Being the middle child in the family doesn't help out too much. Because my mother always feels bad for my younger brother. You know, he didn't have a father and he was younger and all this, so he gets usually more junk. Then my older brother's married and they need everything, so... That's that. But, what the hell? As long as I got something, I guess that's all that counts. It's the thought, not the gift, you know? <laughs> but we went out drinking, what was it? Christmas, the day before Christmas, we had we have a half a day. It's not scheduled in the books, you know? We're not, we're supposed to have a whole day, but they, we, every year they give us a half a day off. You know? And uh, so we went down to Howard Johnson's, and we had, uh, I was only stayed there for a couple of hours because uh, I had to go pick up Franny. He came home and to see his aunt and uncle and his father. But I had a few drinks and then went up to pick up Franny and had a few more. Then I came back home, brought Franny here. We had a few drinks. And then by the time I hit midnight mass, I was in South, but I took those damn no-dose pills and mixed those with alcohol and they, you know, they're about a couple of years old anyways. Oh, friend, uh, Bob, you should see, I just started to, uh, all pins and needles come to my face, you know, and I thought, oh, for sure this was it. And they had this damn violinist that was playing downstairs at the low mass and she played lousy. Oh, it was the squeakiest music I ever heard. You wouldn't believe it. And you couldn't even hear the choir singing. It was a low mass, but they had a choir singing down there. And this violinist out drowned the organ out and the singers. And she played terrible. And by communion time, I felt so sick. And, you know, I couldn't even stand up. I had to sit down during the rest of the mass. And that's usually not like me. But anyways, I couldn't go to commune. I felt very bad about that. And on the way out, to top it out, she kept on playing, you know? And I just gave her the dirtiest look anybody could ever give, you know? It was one of these uh, high-class persons, you know, with a stummed-up nose and everything else. <laughs> oh, don't I play beautiful? As if she was saying, oh, you wouldn't believe how miserable she played. Oh. I think I could I I know I could have played better if I just picked up a violin and started trying to it. Oh, did she play awful. It was so squeaky. Oh, you could never believe it. It was so hot down there. Usually in 
you know, everybody go to try to go to the midnight mass, and they're always crowded. We got there early. We had good seats and everything, but still it was so crowded and hot and all those pills. I was, I took only two no-dos, but the alcohol in me, everything, I guess, really did it. I got kind of scared, though, because, you know, I never fainted before. So, after all that ordeal and my car breaking down and my mother freezing in the car and the bills to be paid and bills yet to be paid, I am just up a tree. I think I, I usually mix two shots in with, you know, with a 12 ounce glass and I don't fill it all the way up with ginger ale three quarters of the way to the top, off to the top. I don't know which I prefer sometimes, but ugh, it always tastes better when you're outside someplace. When I'm out, I usually drink just beer. You know, when I'm with Franny, I always drink, not always, but most of the time I drink hard stuff because I know I'm not going to drink that much if I have to drive all the way back home. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> so, I hope everything is going for the better there. I'm sorry to hear that you're bankrupt, <coughs> or going bankrupt. Uh, maybe if they were more lenient with the people there, or they could keep a few more people there to produce more work and to love God more, not just to say, oh, this one doesn't love God or this one does. He doesn't love him the way we think he should. They have more people to staff your buildings and to produce something. But that's their problem now. They'll probably end up just with one building, I doubt if Society of St. Paul will ever say claim bankruptcy, though. Maybe for all the other buildings, but, you know, like uh, Derby and uh, Canfield, but I think they'll always keep uh, Staten Island. And I'm sorry, you know, the way you're eating there, but figure this way. Uh, well, a couple of days last week, we didn't even have a piece of bread in this house to eat, so don't feel so bad. There's a lot of people worse than you are. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. And I usually never eat. And that time, we didn't hardly have any food. I was starved. We had a few uh, 12 raviolis in the refrigerator at the most, and had a can of a can of. Hunt's tomato sauce. Of course, we had all the seasonings. So I made myself some ravioli. And I was eating all that day. That was a, one of the days I took off, you know, because of my car. I said I was sick and I wasn't. So it was starved. Now <coughs> we have food in the house and I won't eat anything. On the top of my bureau up there, I have a, a box of chicken in a basket that I'm supposed to eat while I'm recording here, but I haven't. And the reason is chicken in a basket, I don't know if you can remember or not, but one time in Canfield, in a certain storeroom, there was a box of those, and I think we ate one of those one night, and oh boy, we must have ate so many that I was sick of them. But I have them, my cats and my dogs like them more than I do, especially the cats and my dogs. I've had a few of them. And I think I'll get one right now. I'll get the box down here. The cord will reach high enough for me to reach up and get them. I'm watching that I don't touch the reel on this. So, oh, I'm still waiting for my insurance bill to come in on my car. I don't know how I'm going to pay that. Mmm, 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 now these good, Bob. Chicken in the basket. I don't know if you ever remember them. We snuck down one time and got them. They were delicious. They're very rich, but they're good, especially when you don't have any food. And I remember in camp, it was so cold in there most of the time. Just to have some kind of food in you kind of made you warm up a little. I 
I hate people eating in front of me. I hope you don't mind. I'm kind of hungry now. Well, I'm not going to let this tape run to the end here like I did on the other ones. But wait, there's a red leader on this, I think. Yeah. So I'll tape until the red leader comes up. I'm going to stop right about... Well, not now. I thought there was a red leader on that tape, but there wasn't. Oh, I thought I lost my chicken in the basket crackers. They're made by Nabisco Company. I don't know if you remember them or not. They were delicious, though. To a certain extent. I hope I'm not boring you. At least you can listen to these if you have nothing else to do. As I said, I was a little bit sober when I listened to the first tape. And I don't know which side was, you know, beginning or end, but it seemed pretty good. I know this tape isn't going to sound as interesting. It's 10 past 5 today, January 12th, so I don't think I'll fall asleep yet. I'm in my room. I told my mother I don't want to be disturbed. say now I'm kind of you know as I said feeling no pain but I'm not that bad under the blankets uh, I didn't mean it that way <laughs> I mean I'm not that bad you know that I can't concentrate a few months ago we were talking at work and one of the ladies and I were discussing something she says but how can you say God is just she says my mother died this summer and she said a young girl ran over by accident. Now can you say that God is just? And I just stopped right there. We didn't have time to talk because of coffee break was over and everything. And I kind of said it politely like that, you know, to her. But I never said anything back to her. You know, I asked this question before when we had Father Damien, but I forget what answer he gave me. You know, it's something like, I believe that God is just no matter what happens to us. But what do I tell other people? I mean, I know I could have told her, well, what if your mother had lived? Maybe she was suffering from cancer. Maybe she would have died a more tragic death. Maybe it was better this way. But I'm left up in the air, and if you can remind me, don't go on a big litany or anything, just, you know, a few sentences in the next tape you send back to me. Explain to me, you know. Don't send me a book or anything. I have a hard time reading enough reading as it is now. But just explain to me, you know, how God is just. Why is God just? How can I prove this? And I know sometimes, I don't know if you remember, in Father Damien's class, I used to come up with some real radical questions because I knew this is what people were asking me and would ask me. You know, how can I say that God is just? Or many other questions I'm not going to go into. And uh, they didn't talk about too much, you know, to me like this. And I, you know, this is, I thought this was very bad. I am talking right now. I'm mixing myself another drink. So the microphone goes between my two knees as I sit here in my room on the floor, leaning against my bed, which is sort of a couch. I'm not using the uh, measuring cap on this bottle. Did you hear that? That was the booze going into the glass. There's a few ice cubes still in there. They're more than three quarters away melted, but I have about three in there. Three in a little dinky do there, but I don't. That's enough to keep it cold. Now I'm putting the tonic bottle between my legs there and pouring it into the bottle. Okay, here we go. So explain that, will you, to me? 
You know, uh, don't be real serious when you explain to me, you know, just so I can understand it, you know, in your own lingo, so I can explain maybe if that ever confronts me again. I did feel quite bad, though, when, you know, in Father Damon's class, a lot of questions he would go off on a tangent, he would never answer for me. Mainly because, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know, he didn't think we should know all these things, or he didn't have time for it. It wasn't nothing to do with the class, but to me it was. I'm lighting up another cigarette. Okay. So, I'm not writing to Richard, uh, just mainly because I'm too lazy to, and I imagine if I was over there in Vietnam, I wish someone would write to me. But if you do write to, which, uh, to Richard Caniglia, please give him my very, very best. And tell him I was asking for him, and I do think about him, and I do pray for him on Sundays. And also, please keep my life. Don't mention anything. Ab I do appreciate, I like to be mentioned there, and, and, you know, in the society. But don't s tell anybody what I am doing or anything. You know, I like to keep them guessing. I'm alive, and that's it. That's all that comes. That's all I should know. <coughs> Send Christmas cards to a lot of people this year I never had before. I sent one to... Brother Edward, I sent one to Brother Charles. I uh, know not Charles, Richard, Charlie Bruna, I call. Him. And uh, Charlie Bruna and I were very, very close. Uh, you know, not close like you and I were, but you know, we we're kind of like brothers. And uh, I should write to him or talk to him. We've had uh, very big disagreements in life, but uh, I'd rather leave it that way. Uh, He's better off without me. He's a very quiet fellow, but he's very deep thinking. <coughs> I liked him a lot. We got along very well, especially when we were in Derby. In Canfield, we did for our first year, or almost to the end. Then we had quite a bit of arguments, and we kind of broke up our friendship. And to this day, he feels kind of hurt. But he tried to break up our friendship before, and, well... That's nothing. Let's forget about that. But anyways, I do, do like him very much, and I should write to him. I'd like to see him again sometime, but uh, <coughs> that's that. And the same with Brother Edward Conrad. He is a nice fellow, but uh, I don't. I never liked him that much. He's a very possessive person. He likes to have a friend and keep him, and can't do anything else you know if you're his friend you can't do anything without telling him and all this shit so I do like him I don't know if it's if I feel sorry for him or what but he is a good fellow so you can tell the both of them I gave him you know my best and same with brother uh, Pascal I was gonna say Jordan Deusman I do like him an awful lot. Uh, he's a nice fellow. I mean, we've had our friendships, you know, with these people, but, you know, nothing like this, you know, you and myself. But uh, I do, you know, hope you say I've heard from Tom and he's doing okay, and that's all. So, uh, that's that. I did get a Christmas card from Father Joseph. I don't think I'll send any of these people Christmas cards next year. And he just signed his name to it. Uh, I don't think he cares, you know, anymore about myself. He has too many other worries, but if you want to, you can say, I don't know what your relationship with him is. You can say, Tom Pacor wrote to me or taped to me, and he mentioned you. That's it. And especially, don't ever forget, please don't forget, uh, talk a little about me to uh, Brother Tarsisius. I liked him very, very much. And uh, maybe a lot of people don't, you know, they have a lot of kooky ideas about him, but I liked him. 
And if you, above anybody else, please say hello to him for me. And I am still praying for him. And I hope he's happy. And I hope that things are working out well for him. Explain to him your own lingo, you know, because he's... And well, he understood me. I don't know if he understood you, understand you. And as far as Brother Albino goes, uh, I liked him very, very much when I was in Derby, but <coughs> he's, you know, been made certain, like, I don't know what he is now. He's been brought up in his rank somehow or another, you know, the provincial council, I think, or he was, and uh, we're kind of scared of him. I'm still kind of a scared of him. Uh, he's, I think he became too much Father Ted-like. He was brainwashed. But you can't say hello to him for me. Uh, he was very down to earth, and then I think he was brainwashed by Father Ted, and I hope it wears off. And uh, I've never, I didn't send a card to Brother uh, Gabriel. <coughs> I think he's still in Derby, so I guess you'll never see him. But uh, if you do, say hello to him for me. I hope you do all this too seriously. I mean, um. I have been thinking seriously now because I laid off the booze a little while. I mixed myself a drink, but I haven't drunk it yet. I better, though, because the ice is melting. <clears throat> but uh, I like Brother Gabriel so much, I couldn't just send him a card because uh, if anybody, he and I were just like brothers. And I don't think anybody ever realized what we were. And uh, I miss him too much to send him a card because I, I feel it'd be just like me, you know, we'd hurt each other, you know, we couldn't see each other. It's not like you and me. I have to send you a card. You know, Brother Gabriel and I weren't close like you. We were more like brothers. You and I are more like one person. I, hate I don't know, I hope you realize that relationship. I did like Brother Gabriel an awful lot. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I do hope you, uh, say hello to, to him for me sometime. And I heard that I didn't know until, uh, I sent a card and a dollar bill to Brother Gabe, not to Brother Gabe, to Brother Gerard and to Brother Paul. To Brother Paul, Brother Gerard, and to Brother, um, what's his name there? The bald, red headed one that was in Canfield with us. Brother Augustine, <laughs> the bald, red headed one. I sent the card to him, him with a dollar in it, you know, because these two people, you know, they don't have anybody really. And I didn't know that Brother Augustine's mother died last summer. You didn't tell me that. So he told me to it, you know, told me about it. <coughs> you know, on a short little note on a Christmas card. But, uh, that's all it was to it. I don't think, you know, I'll send any cards or anything to these people. They probably send me next year, but I don't know if I will with them. But, you know, I felt kind of bad for them, even though it hurt me a lot in my pocketbook. You know, I figured, though, well, those two I could sacrifice for. It. And as for you, I plan, you know, kind of planning you coming up here, and then I realized that you weren't, and it was too late to send you something, so. <coughs> Maybe for your birthday, or at least the tapes. I hope you feel the same way I do, you know. A gift, you know, it's just myself, it's more than I can give to anybody. I felt kind of bad when you sent me those pajamas and the books because I couldn't afford to send you anything. But I'm, kind of, I'm talking very, uh, you know, not seminarious like outside the world, I'm talking my problems, but I think you realize what I'm going through and all this shit. I still am very confused. By the way, the time my car broke down, I didn't go to church. I haven't been to confession to confess it, because I could have walked down to one of the churches, and I didn't. But I am sorry I did miss, so if I get killed between now and confession, I hope God will give me mercy.
because I did go to church today. That's the first time I ever missed church since I've been out of the seminary, and I didn't like it very much, so... Even though... Well, today's the Feast of the Holy Family, by the way, and, uh... Well, that was the Mass that was said today. Actually, the Feast was January 6th, I think. <coughs> but they said that Mass today at church, January 12th, today, and the priest gave a pretty good sermon for a change. Kind of boring, but still better than usual. As I said, I'm very confused, and oh, I just feel like I should be dead. I don't belong in this world anymore. Uh, excuse me. second one. The first one seemed very interesting to me. This second tape, I don't know. I'm worried. I'm just giving myself right now. And as I said, this is probably how I'd feel if I finished <laughs> taping that first tape all on the same day. I still don't feel very inebriated. It's funny, you know, sometimes you can drink one drink and you feel loaded. Other times you can drink about 12 and you don't feel loaded. A couple of times, more than a couple of times, we went down to Howard Johnson's and I had about 12 beers and I felt, you know, all right coming out. I didn't feel that loaded. And other times I can just have one, you know, and that's it for me. And I'll have two or three or four and then I'll go. But still, you know, go home. And I live maybe about a mile and a half, two miles, maybe three miles up the road from it, from where I work. Well, it's actually a 10 minute drive. 15 minute drive at the most. So, I noticed in the first tape, my the German Shepherd down cellar was barking a lot. If that means anything, you told me about your little dog. You were so happy to see him. And you decorate your Christmas tree. And, uh, that was nice. It's the first time he had a big Christmas tree in quite some time, I gather. We bought our Christmas tree already, and we have disposed of it already. I don't know, I feel very, very lonely. I need people to fulfill my life. I like to get married, but I don't know. I don't want to rush into it. There's one girl I like. She's She goes bowling. You know, we have about four, maybe, not four, maybe about ten different teams that bowl for iTech. And uh, she's on one of them. She works in another building in Lexington. That's another city. It's not too far from where I work, but I kind of like her. I like blondes. And, uh, well, I've been making passes at her, and she hasn't been making very many passes at me. And, uh, I don't know. I doubt if I'll get any place with her. This other guy, we go down to Howard Johnson. He says he knows a nice blonde, but she's going steady with this other guy now, but she'll probably break up with him. And from all he's told about me, you know, she's supposed to be pretty good, but... I don't know. I doubt if I'll ever get her. He's probably all talk. Oh boy, is it a crazy world. I have another chicken in the basket cracker. I hope that uh, your new year is better than last year. Not that last year was bad, but you'll find more joy, more happiness, and you give more joy and more happiness, especially give. I 
hope you I hope you think a lot when I say these tapes here and then. I hope I don't confuse you any, but maybe you understand me better. As I said so many times, you know, I've given so much and I I feel this is you know, the the most I can give, you know, I'm waiting for my life to be blown out like a candle. Or it's it's gonna be even worse. I'm gonna suffer and be an old man, you know. So many worries. Oh, you wouldn't believe them all. Sometime we'll see each other. We'll, I'll get them all off my mind, and you'll tell me all yours, and I don't know. Just be a good brother. Even if you don't think you should be, just be a good brother. Because I think you should be. Yep. You're... I think you're the now generation, not completely, because you've been shut off in the world, but I'd say uh, 80% of the now generation. That's being very lenient, because I think you're very conservative in some ways, as I am. But be yourself. Be happy. Oh, man. As I told you... Oh, I don't know for shit. I don't think you ever heard me say... Oh, yes, you have. That's my favorite expression. That's my favorite swear. Shit, or shice to a fago. I don't know where that just left off. Larry just came into the room there, and he thanked me for his Christmas. I mean, his Christmas, his birthday presents. I gave him a shirt and three ties and a tie rack. So, and five dollars and a card. So, I'll just continue on talking. Huh. Left off in a kind of bad spot. I... No, it was a good thought I was speaking about, but uh, that's it. You know, it seems funny taping these tapes, especially if you tape, you know, a long tape like this, and it seems like you're talking to yourself after a while, you know? There's nobody there to say, uh, uh, yeah, I understand or disagree or something, you know, like you. You're always saying, well, what do you mean by this? What? Well, what do you think of this, you know? Is uh, Besides being a little bit inebriated, not completely inebriated, uh... I can tell I'm not completely inebriated because I, I have my senses about me more than I would if I was out in a bar. I have my glasses on. Yeah. If I take my glasses off, I always feel a lot more drunker than I am because I can't see without... I can see, you know, close up, but I can't see far away. And if I start looking off on, you know, on the other side of the room or something, and I can't see, especially when I've been drinking... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> he must be laughing. <laughs> it makes me feel, you know, a lot more inebriated than I actually am. So usually when I go into the bar room, if I remember, I'll take off my glasses. And then when I start really feeling inebriated, I'll put on my glasses. Then I can have a few more drinks. <laughs> Isn't that a good idea? Here's to you. Oh, that drink is bad. I have to have another drink. the ice has melted, and I have to have another ciggy boo. <coughs> Okie dokie, I got some smoke in my left eyeball, and I'm rubbing it out, okay. Uh, yes, I was telling you about, you know, how I feel like that. Especially, you know, when I go to a bar or something like that, if I don't take a leak, I usually try to like to drink beer because I have to drive home, and if I have to drive, I don't like to drink that much. Although sometimes I really get carried away. I still make it home pretty good, except for that time, I don't know if you remember, I ran over the street sign and kind of got me scared. My car still has a big dent in the front of it, but... Uh, yeah. When I drink, you know, if I go take a leak, I'll go pee-pee. 
uh, that was great, all that shit. Uh, and then I come back, I feel, you know, a lot better. I feel my senses have gained about me, you know. I always wash my face and my wrist, sometimes the back of my neck. And then, you know, I can start talking again. Well, I talk anyways, but, you know, thinking more deeply. Right now, I'm starting to feel sober again. It's because I have to take a leak, but I'm not going to until I finish this tape. And maybe the pain of it is, it's not that bad. But, uh... I do have it, but I want to finish this side of the second tape there anyways. Give you a lot to listen to. <laughs> Cheer up your life a lot there. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I know that needle is popping way up higher in my uh, recorder, but... Uh, <laughs> you must have a hell of a time listening to these tapes here because I don't put any leaders on them. I'm not going to go out and spend money because I can't afford to buy leaders. And you may say, oh, it's only such and such a price, but who? Oh. Uh, we went down to Howard Johnson's, was it last Friday? Don't forget. I just dropped the microphone. Don't forget, uh, today's the 12th and Friday... Uh, I don't know what date it was because I have a 1968 calendar in front of me. But anyways, last Friday, a few days ago, two or three days ago, I forget which which it was. But anyways, uh, one of the kids was going to, uh, into the service, and uh, we went down there. We had a few drinks, just a few of us. He was a nice guy. We used to always go out to lunch together with him and another guy he works with. He works in the same department but a different area. I'm not going to go through that, but... Uh, he works in mechanical, I work in electrical. But we used to go down to this Kelly Hamburgers or Kemp Hamburgers. It's, the, you know, these places where you get hamburgers for 20 cents, you know, and ugh, it tastes like husk meat. But, you know, we used to have a good time going down there. At lunchtime, we had only had a half hour. And uh, <coughs> we're pretty good friends. And, you know, I only seen him at work. But he was only 17. You know, he was mature in his age. You know, he was like... Uh, he acted, you know, like he was 20 or so sometimes. Sometimes he didn't, too. Uh, he used to always get in my hair sometimes, but he was a good guy. So we went down there, and I was afraid, you know, because we don't like anybody going down there if they're underage, because if that place ever got closed down, you know, we'd never be able to go out for drinks. You have to go for about 10 miles because Wuben is dry. The only thing they have is liquor stores, and you have to go all the way to Bill Recca. Bill Recca. <laughs> yeah. Stop laughing, you damn fool. Shit. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. So, uh, <laughs> oh, boy, where do you get this tape? <laughs> Jeez. We used to go down there maybe once or twice a week, you know, for lunch. <coughs> Otherwise, we'd eat in that lousy cafeteria. And, uh, so he came in with us, and we had beer, and his cousin works for us. He's, his cousin's about maybe... 27, 28, 30, maybe. He's been around his cousin too. He drinks and he's probably had every woman in town. I don't know, but he's a nice guy to me, anyways. He always talks me down, but he's a nice guy. And uh, I got out of there last Friday around 7, 7.30, which was earlier than the last Friday, 9, 9.30. You know, you always start talking to everybody in there too, and they start talking to you, so. <coughs> It's a very small lounge, but the drinks are good, and the bartender knows us, and he's good to us, so. But I gotta stop that. I can't afford it, first of all. <coughs> if I buy 55 cents, you know, it's a beer, 55 cents, and if I buy four beers in a night, that's uh, four fives or 20, right, zero, number two, four fives or 20, that's about 220 plus a tip, 50 cents anyways. <coughs> so kind of expensive. I can't afford that every night. And if you can go buy a six-pack for a dollar forty, so... I need more social life, I know, but... Excuse me. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> this tape is going to be right, I tell you. <laughs> I hope you're not disappointed. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do in making it. The tape. Making the tape, that's all. Not making anything else the tape. Oh, boy. I'm trying to think of some interesting things. I'm trying to 
told you I was going to the hospital tomorrow to donate blood. Not to the Red Cross, but just to the hospital. <coughs> well, let me see. Tuesday is nothing, I know. I hope I don't go down to Howard Johnson's. I have to refrain myself until Thursday is bowling nights. And I do real lots because everybody gets soused and we drink down there. Sometimes we drink at the bowling alley. You buy our own booze and... Or somebody buys booze and they have a couple of cans of beer or at least one, you know, and you drink before you go down Howard Johnson's before I go bowling. So, don't forget to give all those messages to the other people I told you to. Especially Brother Tusses, just don't forget him. He's very lonely. No one seems to like him. <coughs> I miss the old place. You must get sick of me saying that. I always say it. No, I do. It's the truth. As I said, as I said, when you start drinking and then you start taping, you know, it feels, after a while, I feel like you're talking to yourself sometimes. I haven't got to that point. And I don't think I will unless I tape you another tape where I, uh, I feel, uh, you know, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I know I'm talking to you, you know, but, you know, you're not right here. And, and I still realize, you know, I'm in my own room with clothes strewn all over the damn place, drawers open in the bureau, and tapes and books and pillows and paper bags and everything strewn all over the place. And, oh, boy, you'd never believe it, Bob. You never lived like this. <laughs> this shitty old house, I tell you. Well, I think I'm going to tape you another tape after this one. I might as well tape you them all. Not all, as many as I can. But don't, you don't have to send them all back to me, you know. Just send the the gray ones, you know. <coughs> the gray one, that's a new tape. And, uh, you know, large tape, whatever you, if you can, I mean. Uh, I, I hope you organize things better than I do, because I don't know. I just send tapes off to you. I don't care which is which. I don't use a tape recorder that often. Once in a while, if there's something good on TV, I might record it. But uh, I'm messing my hair up right now. I'm very fussy about that. Ugh. Oh, by the way, I have sideburns now. I don't know if I'll clip them off. But I have sideburns. Mm -hmm. One of the gals at work, she says she likes them. She's been married once. She's she's uh, she's a real tomboy. You'd, if you didn't know about it, you might call her a lesbian, but she isn't. But uh, she's too old for me, but we have good friendship going on. She likes another guy there, and she likes another guy outside of work, but she's a good girl. And uh, she came, she let me read that book. You know, I read, I read some quotations at one of the tapes from it. And uh, I gave her that book, Prayers, to read. She's not a Catholic. She tried all kinds of religions. Uh, she's had a real tough life. She has a kid and all this shit, but she owns a red Cadillac, too. <laughs> but uh, she's too old for me, and I could never give her what I, you know, what she wanted. Oh, geez, she wanted an awful lot. I could never give her that. I wouldn't have it in me. That's for one thing. And another thing is, I, I don't think I'd be happy, you know, married to her or in love with her or anything, but we do have a very good understanding, and I like her very much as a, you know, like a friend. So, let me see. Let me describe my room for you before I tape the next tape and take a leak and become sober. No, I don't think I will. I might as well. I don't know. I'll describe a little. I have a light in the ceiling that I put in there. It's chipped at one end, the uh, shade of it. My gold sports coat is hanging on the back of the door with that clothes hanger I had in Ohio, I don't know if you can remember, you just clamp it onto the back of the door and I have a sweater and a white coat and a white, white jacket sort of and a real loud shirt and my dungaree jacket, which I never wear, and then a red sports coat and a gold sports coat. And on my bureau I have two drawers open, clothes slinging out of it, and then I have a Boston baked bean jar on the top with a few pennies in it and uh, I have a little thing the book on top there and a little book rack I used to have there and a can of band deodorant which is empty a package of empty Viceroy cigarettes and then I go to the bookcase 
and the bookcase has an empty box on it. It's an empty box, or you know, a tape box. Then I have my dictionary, my thesaurus, and then I have the tape, and then I have the tape recorder cover, and then I have your two books, which I haven't read yet, I hope to read. Then there's my bureau, and underneath is strewn more junk, my typewriter, which I never use. And there's more junk there. I, I don't know, well, maybe I might not type any more tapes. I don't know, it depends. If you get three tapes, you get three tapes. I don't mean it like that, but, you know. My ashtray, socks on the radiator, clothes on the floor. You can't even walk in here. Clothes, I have one of those wooden dry uh, rack 